let's review what we've learned about simple circuits. I say simple because we've only considered cases involving a single battery. Multiple batteries can await your further study. And most often we've used identical light bulbs, bulbs with the same resistance. Why? To make calculations simple for better focus on the concepts. You may encounter more challenging circuits later, but not here. So here are three situations of a bulb attached in different positions. Does the battery know the difference? Does it care where the bulb is placed? Will current be any different? I hope you said not at all. I can't think of a simpler circuit. How about this three branch parallel circuit, each with the same battery and identical bulbs? An ammeter placed in any one of these three positions measures the current in that branch. Notice the ammeter is connected in series with the wire that connects to the bulbs. How does an ammeter not add to the resistance of the circuit? After all, every device has some resistance. The resistance of an ammeter, however, is tiny, tiny. Tiny enough that its effect on current is tiny, tiny, negligible, akin to the negligible resistance of the connecting wires. So an ammeter makes its measurement with negligible effect on the current it measures. How do the current readings in circuits A, B, and C compare? Since these are identical bulbs, did you say the current readings are the same for each position? If yes, yum, for each bulb is powered by the full battery voltage. Let's suppose the current in each branch is 1 amp. I'll just show this for circuit B. What would be the current reading if we place the ammeter here? Did you say 3 amps? And do you say that because the current through it is the sum of the currents in the three branches? Is that what you're thinking? If yes, a uh, yum yum. And if one of the bulbs suddenly burns out, would there be a difference in the ammeter reading? Can you see it would read 2 amps? And if two bulbs burn out, what would the reading be? Do you see it would be 1 amp? And if all three bulbs burned out, what would the reading be? Aha, uh -huh. can you see it would be zero? For there's no circuit connecting the battery terminals. Here we have three circuits with the ammeter reading the total current in the circuit. And again, bulbs are identical. If the ammeter reading in circuit A is one amp, what is it in circuit B? Will it be more, less, or the same? Current will be one amp in each branch. So what's the current in the ammeter? That's right, two amps. Got it? And what's the ammeter current in circuit C? Did you say three amps? That's correct, but only because the bulbs and their resistances are identical. Ah, let's talk about voltage drop. Here we have three circuits, A, B, and C, again with identical bulbs. Our meter here is a voltmeter. Note that the voltmeter in each is connected in parallel with each bulb. How does the voltmeter not affect what it's measuring? Its resistance, unlike the low resistance of an ammeter, is very high. So negligible current passes through it. In this way, the current in the bulb isn't affected. In circuit A, you can see that the voltmeter reads voltage across the lamp, which is also the battery voltage. If the battery is a 6 volter, then the voltmeter reads 6 volts. All the energy per charge supplied by the battery drops across this lone bulb. How about circuit B with two bulbs? Can you see that the 6 volts is across both bulbs, and since resistances are equal, the voltmeter reads 3 volts? And how about circuit C with three bulbs? Can you see the voltmeter reads 2 volts because it measures the voltage across one-third the load fed by the battery? And while we're on circuits, which circuit, A, B, or C, draws the most current from the battery? Can you see it's circuit A because it has the least resistance? And which circuit draws the least current from the battery? Correct if you said circuit C because it has three times as much resistance and, by Ohm's law, one-third the current as in circuit A. Here's a two-bulb parallel circuit with two bulbs in series in the upper branch. Are the bulbs equally bright? 
or unequal in brightness? To find out, let's consider the power consumed by each bulb. Recall power equals current times voltage. To expedite thinking about this, let's assume the bulb in the bottom branch uses 6 watts of power. For a 6 volt battery, that means the current in the bottom branch is 1 amp. Get it? 1 amp times 6 volts equals 6 watts. If there's 1 amp in the lower branch, can you see the current in the top branch is half as much? 1 half amp? That's by way of Ohm's law. Twice the resistance for the same voltage means half the current. And what's the voltage across each bulb? For identical resistances of each, can you see it's 3 volts? That's right, a 3 volt voltage drop across each bulb. So the power consumed in each bulb of the top branch is 1 half amp times 3 volts equals 1.5 watts. So the top bulbs are dimmer. Another question. How would the combined brightnesses of the top bulbs compare with that of the lower bulb? Would brightnesses be the same? Did you say no? That's right, for the combined power of the pair of bulbs is 3 watts. That's half the 6 watts of the lower bulb. So the top bulbs, even with brightnesses combined, consume less power and give out less light than the lower bulb. Let's conclude with these three circuits where battery and bulbs are all the same. Or, are the sketches of one circuit viewed in different ways? Clearly, the three bulbs in the first sketch are connected directly to the terminals of the battery. So it's a three-branch equal resistance parallel circuit. But is it electrically different from the middle circuit? Can you see that the full voltage is still across each of the three bulbs? And how about the circuit on the right? Isn't this a more conventional way to show the same circuit? Doesn't the battery see all three arrangements as the same? In the lab, your connections may be even messier, but the battery won't know it so long as the connections are correct. In all our circuits, we ignore the resistance of the connecting wires, for they are insignificant compared with the resistance of light bulbs. And we ignore the internal resistance of the battery, which, unless it is connected to a heavy load, can also be ignored. The circuits here and in previous lessons are very simple in design. Their features, however, can be challenging. If your learning interests have nothing to do with electric circuits, why study them? The answer to this is personal. By studying electric circuits, you're changing the electrical circuitry in your own brain. You're developing cranial circuit connections that didn't exist before. You're going to need and use that brain for the rest of your life. Like a muscle, use it or lose it. Hooray for the education that comes from hard study. Let me leave you with a question. Does a battery supply electrons to a circuit? Or does it energize electrons already there in the circuit? Until next time, good energy. Mm -hmm.